A little bit of a caution here in this early Monday morning as Bitcoin gets some closing signals from the long signals that we were looking at uh, over the past couple weeks and a few other things on the higher term time frames, which I do think the bull laws might be very interested in, uh, but of course more relevant to the long term. And then we'll look at some daily statistics and uh, and some rate statistics as well. Anyways, other than that, I want to welcome you back to the Aircrown Crypto channel. It's a nice little Monday morning. We already said that. You already know what day it is. doesn't even matter what day it is. Let's just jump right into it. So first things first, we'll start off with this Market Oracle Pro indicator, just because it's actually been pretty damn interesting. Um, even on the full hour when Bitcoin was ranging uh, pretty tightly for the last like six months, it was decent. I mean, it, these weren't like home run plays, but there weren't really like home run plays to be had in this market, as you can see. However, the most recent buy that we did see on this was coming in from Sunday of the 15th of October. And that did lead all the way from Bitcoin at about 27,500 to, well, now this closing sell over here where Bitcoin's about 35,000 bucks. So not bad in that case else is spilling drinks in the background, but that's not important. Anyways, uh, <laughs> anyways, um, that would imply, yeah, you know, the short, you know, th this, this kind of short term move over here, very likely done. Bitcoin does go into maybe a greater range as it consolidates. And then maybe we see some more of these rotations that we've seen been seen across the altcoin sector. But as of right now, we can also see that if we reference the range statistics, that Monday specifically does have about a 45 spot, 83% probability to close positively if we measure all of the previous Mondays throughout Bitcoin's history. Now, of those Mondays that did close positively, it did have an average return of about 2.5%, a little, above, little bit above that. And the ones that did close negatively did have an average loss of about 2 spot, 3 4%. So in this case, I would say that the downside in the short term, probably more likely as we do, as we will get into a little bit later. Um, but if we were to shave off just over 2%, well, where would that put Bitcoin? That would put Bitcoin like low 34,000 bucks, still resting a little bit above the current range lows. So I'm sure a lot of people are going to be charting this as a nice powder and they're going to be like, hey, it's a, it's a rising herp and derp. And yeah, sometimes these do play out. Um, but ultimately, I wouldn't really say that this is uh, going to be anything of like significant concern for the higher term time frames. Again, as long as Bitcoin's above, especially even 33,000 bucks, but I'd go as far down at now at, at you know at about like 32.5 to 32.8, depending upon the time frame. Um, anyways, both of these indicators that we just showcased here, both this range or the you know the daily statistics plus the Oracle Pro. Um, are actually available in the same package that you can see in the uh, in the shill link description below. It actually even includes the Jewelite as well. And there's actually several other indicators. One of them I haven't really even spoken about too much. It's this. It's actually this uh, this 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 entropy indicator down here, which I'm still. I'm still fine tuning, but I think that there's some pretty interesting things right there. Possibly it could even replace volatility, but I don't think it's ready just yet. I don't think it's ready just yet. Although there are, you know, more indicators uh, included there as well. And I'll actually be adding some more over time as I relay my own ideas to their coders. Anyways, um, yeah, we can move on now. I think the next thing to get into is also kind of a corroborating statement here that Bitcoin more likely in the short term to pull back. We do start to see bearish divergence emerge um, on this last little slightly higher high right here on price action with lower highs on daily RSI. Daily RSI also losing the exponential right there, as you can see. And, you know, corrected move likely inbound, I suspect, after getting to one of the highest RSI reads that we've seen basically since January. So the January rally um, was comparable to what we're seeing right here. So short term, yeah, pullback is not, you know, super crazy to speak about, especially alongside volatility, having a nice contraction phase. Anyways, uh, we can also even see that the that the jewel is getting, a, you know, it's not like a downside signal right here. It's a corrective signal. It's not supported by DMI. So don't look at this as like super concerning um, again. But uh, but yeah, in the short term, you know, just a pullback a little bit more, maybe fill out somewhere down around that uh, yellow 21 exponential moon average. Definitely possible um, as it does start to march its way up to current price action. So, you know, a consolidation here sideways probably does benefit the altcoins just because we have been seeing a lot of rotations. This Bitcoin just has been uh, trading around this $35,000 region. Altcoins have actually been popping off. Um, it does seem like in Bitcoin coin dominance headed down from 54%, which is actually one of our major targets um, coming off of the summer rally. And I did come back in, I think it was August, late August saying that, hey, 54% is actually, it actually might even be the high for, for at least a while. And if things get, get really crazy, then maybe, maybe a very long time. But um, I do think that it's going to be like a monthly high, essentially. Anyways, uh, okay, cool. Now that we've gotten through that, let's go into the 
hey, not this yet. We'll go we'll go to the bands over here. Um, so again, you know, looking at the daily HPDR bands, we can see that the bottom side of the 50% of, of historic returns range lows is about 33,300. You know, do we see a quick wick somewhere down around there? Maybe, possibly, um, on this pullback. Just, again, don't want to see, you know, major closures below there uh, if the bull laws are going to continue to um, remain in control here, setting in higher lows as Bitcoin does march its way upwards and onwards. We can see, again, volatility just, you know, collapsing after a nice explosion, the first explosion that we've seen in a long time. That is a good reset, again, as Bitcoin more or less maintains the median of the range, which is actually not a bad thing. And the HPDRO directional volatility starts to reset here as well. So all of these things, uh, again, signal to me that first and foremost, this is likely going to be a corrected move, but corrected within the context of the current, you know, uh, trend is, well, is up. So probably another higher low. Um, how long does it take? I don't know, maybe another week, who knows. Um, but, uh, but, you know, we'll follow up from there. Anyways, um, before we get into the very, very high term timeframes, I do want to go over stochastic momentum. Again, weekly time frame is going to be still uh, vertical here as long as Bitcoin's above 29,550. Not bad. Um, the bi weekly time frame, which uh, just closed last night, by the way, is going to be freshly crossing up, assuming that Bitcoin remains above about 30,800. So, you know, big pivots right there. Again, um, to be aware of a uh, five-day time frame, again, vertical as long as Bitcoin's above 28, uh, 250. Two-day time frame, getting way up there. Um, will turn down below 35, 125. Currently, Bitcoin on CME trading about 25 bucks below that number, so it doesn't really mean much. Daily time frame, going to be flippy floppy here. Again, in the extreme zones, 35, 750, the current magical number. 12-hour time frame is going to be showing uh, actually heavy downside below 36, 400. Six-hour time frame, going to also be showing downside uh, pressure below 35, 1. And well, Bitcoin's kind of out there right now. Four hour time frame, we're gonna be flipping up above uh, 34.7 and actually playing out a bit of a trend line regression bounce here. So maybe maybe in the very, very short term, it does try for a little bit of a bounce, um, but I still do think that the daily probably trades a little bit to the downside before anything else. Um, or, you know, after maybe a very short term time frame bouncing, hourly is gonna be showing downside pressure below 35, uh, 400 as well. So, you know, looking at it, uh, short term, very, very short term, like very, 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 very short term, might maybe like a small bounce, but ultimately um, I would be looking for Bitcoin to kind of fill out the range uh, yet again, try for a higher low and then game on. Why do I say that? Because, well, not only do we have, you know, a pretty strong uptrend as it is uh, right now, but the bi-weekly time frame just closed as of last night. And the bi-weekly time frame did confirm a nice silver cross. The first silver cross that we've seen basically since uh, May of 2019. Yeah, things had come back down on, you know, what some people might call a black swan event um, about a year later where it, you know, it was tested. But ultimately that did, that cross did lead all the way up to, you know, the next uh, macro highs. Um, the one before that and the only one before that, so it's really not going off too much right here, would be back on over in November of 2015. Again, basically uh, caught the move from 400 bucks to 20,000 bucks price per Bitcoin, so not bad right there. To be fair though, not a whole hell of a lot to be going off of right here, but generally speaking, that silver cross, that 21, that, that yellow 21 and the green 55, um, having the lower period cross the upside of the higher period, you know, is going to be favorable towards uh, a, lo a more long-term uptrend, as you can see. Um, doesn't mean that things can't pull back in the short term. Uh, like I said, even going down as low as like 32,500 would be okay for the long term just don't want to see like major higher term time frame closures below there so kind of wrapping this one all uh this this one all up um bitcoin probably pulls back probably uh sets in a higher low and probably continues on to the upside uh you know in later in later november anyways i think that is a good place for me to be leaving off i do want to give a shout out to all the people who messaged me for um for fight night tickets i uh, i don't have that many um <laughs> unfortunately um, i'll try to get back to everyone who did um uh, but it looks like unless if other people cancel, um, unfortunately, I am out of tickets at this moment. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, but I do want to say I massively appreciate the support, especially what I've been seeing on like Twitter and Discord and YouTube. I mean, it's fucking crazy, man. It's really, really cool. Really looking forward to it. By the way, there will be a free live stream. Um, uh, it's I posted it somewhere on Twitter. There will be betting as well, which... I don't know how the fuck they're going to figure out the lines, but I have a show link in the description below where you can do that too. I think the line's going to be up maybe this week, probably this week, hopefully this week. Um, and yeah, with that said, I want to be wishing you the best, best as always. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully tomorrow.